Recently, I made a video where I cut the ribs for the inner grid of a torsion box. They looked like this. And if you make all the ribs in the grid full length instead of lots of little pieces, then it's much faster to assemble the grid uh, for uh, putting the torsion box together. And uh, the way you do that is you do half lap joints. So now I wanna show a more complete example and use it to explain what it is that really makes a torsion box stiff. In terms of stiffness and rigidity, an engineer talks about beams and there are solid beams and there are I-beams and a torsion box is just another kind of beam. A torsion box is not as stiff as a solid beam, but it does a fine imitation of one considering that it's mostly air. The rigidity and stiffness is mostly determined by how thick the beam or torsion box is. In terms of math, the stiffness is proportional to the cube of the thickness. Another way to say that is, if you double the thickness, you make it eight times stiffer. Nothing else about a torsion box or the way you construct it is as important as the overall thickness. For example, the thickness and strength of the material you use to construct those ribs uh, of the grid isn't actually very important. So I'm gonna make a torsion box out of this plywood. This stuff is 4.8 millimeters thick in actual thickness, which is right around 3 16 of an inch. In its current form, it is not at all rigid. I can bend it very easily. Let's find out just how rigid of a torsion box I can make using this stuff to make the ribs. Typically, people talk about building one that's two, three, four inches thick. I'm exploring the extremes here, so I'm gonna do something a little absurd. I'm gonna make a torsion box where the ribs are six inches wide. So the resulting torsion box will be six inches thick plus the thickness of the skins. So I've cut six uh, of these long pieces, eight feet long. I'm gonna make this five feet long and 16 inches wide. So the situation here is a bit different than the previous video because the trenches I need to cut to go halfway through a six inch piece for a half lap joint are about three inches and my track saw can't cut a three inch depth. So what I'm gonna do this time is I'm gonna lay the boards down and cut them sort of the regular way like a cross cut, except I'm gonna stop the cut about halfway through. In order to help me get the track saw stopped at the same point every cut, I've uh, installed this, uh, this stop. It's a track saw guide rail stop. I got it from a place called Tool Curve and I'll put a link to it in the description. I think that anything that you could stick and firmly latch into the uh, slot on the top of the guide rail would work just fine, like a clamp or something, but this is what I had around, so I grabbed it. The round curvature of the blade is a bit of a problem when trying to do this stopped cut with multiple boards at a time. I've placed a mark here where I want the cut to stop, and I've moved the saw to the point where if I were to make the cut and stop it here, the top board would be pretty close, but the bottom board, the cut would be well short. Let's just see what happens if I try and do a stopped cut with just two boards instead of four. I've set that rail stop such that the board on the bottom has enough clearance and then the board on top, the notch just goes too far. You can sort of see the scale of the compromise if I take these two boards and turn them over on each other and line up the notches. The bottom of the two trenches are not going to be in contact. The reason I don't think any of this matters is that these trenches, these notches, are, are not joinery, they're just traffic control. They're just a way of getting these 
ribs out of each other's way as they cross over. Nonetheless, I'm only gonna cut stacks of two at a time to minimize the effect of this problem. Okay, I have all of the ribs cut with all their slots. I have four long ribs with 14 slots each. And I have 14 short ribs with four slots each. I will uh, say that I cut these with a track saw and that didn't work out very well. For this particular weird case of a really deep slot, a router probably would have been better. Anyway, the win here once again is that all the ribs are the full length in their dimension so I can assemble things relatively easily. I have 18 pieces of wood here. If I did this the other way and used short pieces, for example, for these ribs, then I would have one, two, three, four, five times 14. I would have 70 pieces just for this direction, and they would all have to be individually glued and toenailed with a brad nailer, usually. So this approach is still saving me a ton of time. In fact, frankly, there's no way I would take the time to make a throwaway torsion box just for a YouTube video if I had to do it the other way. So if this all works out okay, I should be able to just assemble this by inserting all these uh, ribs into their slots and tapping things together. Assembly of the grid took just under 10 minutes. Now I just need to cut and uh, glue on the skins. I'm not even gonna bother putting sidewalls on it because for this test and demo, they're not important. I might want them for looks or for uh, attaching something to them if this were, for example, a bench top. But the real source of strength and stiffness is the grid, not the uh, sidewalls. But one thing that is very important is glue. In order for this torsion box to pretend to be a solid beam, the grid ribs need to be one with the skins. Simply using nails and screws will not suffice. And in this case, because the grid ribs are so thin, nails and screws wouldn't work anyway. Originally, my plan was to just weight down the skins uh, in lieu of clamps. And then I did a little bit of math and I wasn't gonna get enough clamping pressure with, uh, without parking like my truck on, uh, on my MFT. So that wasn't gonna work. The glue bottle says wait 24 hours before stressing the glue joint. And I do plan to stress it. Uh, in fact, I plan to torture it. So I'll uh, check in on all of this tomorrow. 16 pounds. If it were a solid beam of the same size and material, it would weigh 115 pounds. Making this torsion box really flat was not a priority and it shows. I did check out my old level with a precision straight edge, it's still remarkably straight. And it is accurately showing that I've got a low spot down in this corner of about a 32nd of an inch but the bulk of it from about here to here is quite flat and it's flat enough and this is accurate enough that I'm gonna be able to measure the deflection as I put some weight on this thing and see how it holds up. For testing this thing, I've moved it over to the tractor side of my shop and I've set it across two concrete blocks and I'm going to torture it by putting on these suitcase weights. These are ballast weights that I put on the back of my tractor to give it extra traction and to counterbalance heavy front loads for safety. The green weights are 70 pounds each. 
The yellow and black weights are 40 pounds each. I don't expect to need nearly all of them. As I add weight, I can measure the deflection by showing the distance between the surface of the torsion box and the level spanning across the middle. Actually, I can stick a seven one thousandths of an inch feeler gauge between the wood and the level right around the center of the box. So that's the starting point, seven one thousandths of an inch. Okay, let's see how this goes. So that's 160 pounds, more or less evenly distributed. Visually, I don't see any deflection. Let's just stick a feeler gauge in here. It's about the same, nothing changed here yet. So I'm at eight of the 40 pound weights. It's about 320 pounds. I mean, I'd say we've increased a little bit. We're still, we're on the order of a hundredth of an inch. I can actually hear the box cracking a little bit. I can just barely slip a 0 0.035 feeler gauge between there. So 35 thousandths of an inch deflection at 460 pounds. At 600 pounds, the deflection is still in the vicinity of three hundredths of an inch, still in feeler gauge territory, well short of something I could measure with a ruler. When I put the weights on, I'm trying to be very careful in case it breaks while I'm standing next to it. All right, that's eight times 70 plus eight times 40, 880 pounds. Definitely more deflection here. I mean, it might be a 16th of an inch. It's hard to tell. I do have six more of those green weights, but I am not inclined to press my luck. I'm quite willing to destroy the torsion box for the demo, but I'm not so enthused about what would happen to my concrete if it broke. Honestly, I'm a little surprised. I did expect the torsion box to be able to handle significant amount of weight, but I didn't expect it to be able to handle 880 pounds. And I didn't expect to be able to film the closing of this video with the torsion box in one piece. Here it is, it survived. The only damage I can see is a bit of the yellow paint rubbed off some of the weights. In short, it handled 880 pounds with a deflection of well under an eighth of an inch, maybe around a 16th. I don't have a precise measurement. To be clear, if I were building a real torsion box for a real purpose in my shop, which I do plan to do, unless I needed a torsion box to be ultra light for some reason, I would use half inch plywood for the web, for the ribs uh, of the inner grid. I would not use three quarter inch plywood for the web. That seems like overkill and just adding extra weight. I would almost certainly use three quarter inch for the skins, probably MDF, but it depends on the application. I would definitely put walls or a, a, an edge around the outside, largely so that I could attach things uh, to the sides. For example, if I'm doing this for a bench top. And of course, I would pay far more attention to making sure that I was building it flat. I would probably also see basically no need to build something that's six inches thick, especially if I used half inch plywood for the ribs. Nonetheless, I remain very happy with the basic idea of using half lap joints, or I'll call them half lap traffic control, to make sure that the ribs are full length in each dimension because it makes things so much faster to put together. Thanks for watching.